All right, so I think we can start. Uh, good morning or good afternoon, good, good evening, even for people who are actually joining us from Israel because it's already uh, nighttime over there and also in France. Uh, my name is Ingrid jean baptiste I'm the founder and the director of the Chelsea Film Festival here in New York City. It will take place this fall from October 15th to the 19th in uh, New York, and in, it will be our eighth year this year. Hopefully it will happen. And during this time of lockdown, of confinement, we decided to bring more um, content to you guys. I know you're very busy, but we wanted to bring some light into your home with this uh, program called Chelsea Film Festival Talks TV series. So every week we bring in a guest from uh, a TV show that is uh, usually a hit TV show that you've been uh, binge watching. Um, and um, we've had in the past an Orthodox. We also uh, talked about the series Orange is the New Black. And today we're going to talk about Fauda. Uh, and I want to say that the conversation will be broadcasted live on Facebook. And also you'll be able to watch the replay on YouTube later today or tomorrow, depending on, on how um, things go with technology. But you will be able to watch the replay for sure. Uh, for any questions that you have, and you, if you are on Zoom, please feel free to uh, put, it, put them now in the chat or later on in the chat box. We'll be able to read them during the Q&A. And now I want to welcome Boaz Conforti, who is joining us from Israel. Thank you, Boaz, for being here with us. Thank you for Thank taking Thank you for having me. Uh, uh, Boaz, he was born and raised in Israel. He served as a tank commander in the IDF, the Israel Defense Forces. He's a graduate from the very reputed school, uh, Beit Tzvi. I hope I'm pronouncing that right because I, I don't speak Ivrit, but uh, with my French accent, I'm trying to, to make it work. So uh, he's- it Sounds even better. Yeah, okay from Beit Zvi, so that it is the longest running school of performing arts in Israel uh, of its kind, a uh, very repeat school, as I just said. He has over 25 uh, credits uh, of TV series, motion pictures. Of course, we know him from uh, his role in Fauda as Avichai, in, uh, also in the Netflix series, The Spy, uh, The Prisoners, Prisoners of War, and Hostages, and many others that uh, maybe he will talk about uh, today. He lives in Israel. He's married to uh, the two times Israeli Academy Award winner. Her name is Liat Arlev. And they have two beautiful kids that we, could, we heard uh, earlier. Thank you again. And our next guest today is Leticia Ido. So I don't know if it's Ido or Ido. Tell me, Leticia. Ah. I don't know if she, she's maybe muted, she muted herself back, but I'm gonna say Aido. So uh, her name uh, is Letizia Aido. She's a singer, she's an actress. She's joining us from uh, Paris, France. And she plays Shirin, Dr. Shirin in Fauda. Uh, Letizia also plays in different languages, such as French, Italian, Spanish, Arabic, Hebrew, and Greek. And you've seen her in, uh, in different films like Holy Air, uh, directed by Shady Sroor, that was at the Tribeca Film Festival about three years ago, and also at the Jerusalem Film Festival. Uh, she was also seen in Tel Aviv on Fire, uh, Aboard Identity, and more recently in Yes, I Do TV series in France. And she also has been awarded uh, Best Actress uh, three times for her lead role in Fatma and Soufer, the feature film uh, that was awarded in Montreal and also at the FESFACO uh, Film Festival, which is the uh, biggest film festival in Africa. And last but not least, our wonderful, amazing co-host, our friend, our friend of the festival, Emma Bell, who's joining us from Los Angeles. She has um, been working in the industry for the past 16 years as an actress. Uh, you've seen her in The Walking Dead, uh, in the famous show Dallas, uh, that everybody knows around the world, Dallas. Uh, the fifth installment of the, of the Final Destination series, 
And now, because of a lack of interesting roles in Hollywood, uh, she has decided to write her own content and she is a, a filmmaker and a writer and still acting, of course. And uh, her film that has been actually been go going to many, many different film festivals across uh, the US is called Between the Pines and has won multiple awards. We were honored to have uh, her last year at the festival and she won the best short film prize for this film. What else can I say about our wonderful host? Uh, she is also currently in development of her on her first feature film. So um, now I think I can uh, hand it over to Emma for the discussion with our wonderful guest. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ingrid. Um, and thank you, Boaz and Leticia, for being with us today. This is, I gotta say, this is so exciting. When Ingrid told me um, that we would be interviewing you guys a couple weeks ago, I had Fauda on my list of shows, and so I spent the last two weeks binging. So I am binged out on Fauda. It is, it is a dark show to binge, but it is a good show. Um, so I'm just like so, so excited to be talking with both of you. Um, and also, I just want to mention that we have probably the most eyeballs on this particular talk right now. And I think that's just a testament to how um, incredibly uh, captivating the show has been for the, the world over. And that's really wonderful, considering it's a show that, I mean, especially in America, it's really hard to get American audiences to watch a show where there's no English at all. So more power to you guys. That's so cool. Um, my first question is actually for Boaz. Uh, what, one of the things that I think is so interesting about is that it, it really it really shows the human struggle on both sides of this conflict, the Israeli and Palestinian conflict. And I and I think that's not something that we necessarily get in the news, at least not over here in the States. Um, and probably around the world that's that's true to to a degree. So you were actually in the IDF. Um, how accurate is the show in depicting in depicting kind of that struggle on both sides and the missions, these secret missions that these men have to go into and across borders to, to accomplish? Uh, I want to separate the, the, my answer to two, to two aspects of, of, of your question. The first one would be the, the accuracy in, uh, regarding to the conflict. The, the actually, uh, the, the, uh, regarding the conflict, the, the series is accurate. I mean, the conflict is there big time. I mean, the, the people, uh, involved in the, in the conflict are involved uh, in, emotionally, and the price that they are that the, both sides are paying is 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 uh, is unbelievable. I mean, this 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 has become the way of life in Israel. Uh, people in Israel are 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 uh, fighting for their right to live. The Palestinians are fighting for their right to uh, of, of their country of what they believe. That Israel is their country. Uh, a part of Israel believes that the, the, the occupied territories are a part of Israel, and this is a conflict that is accurate. And the, the, what the, the Fauda does is takes the takes the conflict to a personal level. I mean, we're talking about not a conflict as an ideologically a, a concept, but a conflict between human beings that are getting involved in such a deep personal um, way that that it becomes it becomes a, one a huge part of the, if, if it's if not the, the 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 biggest part of their lives uh, the, this conflict it, it, uh, it totally uh, takes over their lives now the, the um, this aspect of the of the personal uh, conflict of these people is real. Regarding the, the second question, is the uh, the undercover part is real? It's very hard for me to 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 give you a, um, <laughs> an honest answer because I, I was in the, I, like like Ingrid said before, I was a tank commander, so I was not in this unit. Uh, from stories that I heard, there is. Uh, quite similar aspects that you see in the series and you see and uh, from from real, uh, real life, uh, but obviously it had 
some kind of adaptment in uh, drama wise sure i mean one of the one, one of the biggest things that that you can see while doing an operation uh, in real life it's much more faster and much more dirtier it's not as clean as you see it on tv and uh, and and it's not so long and it's not so dramatic uh, when when you look at it at, 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 uh, from from the side and uh, all these aspects have has, has made uh, is, is an adaptation for for uh, for tv to make the drama to uh, but i can't tell you exactly if uh, if if uh, you can take one uh, some operation and, you, and i can tell you this is exactly how it is in real life no it's not, it's not exactly but i can't tell you how it is exactly even if i knew i couldn't tell you <laughs> classic i love that well yeah i mean of course in hollywood you know uh you're gonna you're gonna make everything seem a little bit you know dramatize things or make it for dramatic effects so to speak or as you said for clear plot goals um, but that, that is very interesting. And I know that the, the showrunner uh, himself, the man who created it, was in one of those secret, more secret yeah. missions. Right? So it was kind of based on his experience. Yeah, the whole show was created by uh, Leon Raz that is playing uh, Doron Cavillo. And uh, his uh, co-writer co is uh, Avi Sarsharov, that he was also in, uh, in that unit. Uh, they created this, this show together. Uh, but I, I want to say that to, that the, that I believe in my in my eyes that the drama uh, in in uh, maybe is not as intense in real life uh, television wise, but the personal drama. I believe that you you cannot really uh, bring to to t television the the amount. Of, of, uh, of emotion and drama that these people uh, experience and these people uh, take home and carry on their back all their lives. Uh, and so, so I believe that in this aspect, I don't believe that you can, uh, you can express it enough in, in TV. It's very, it's very hard. These people go through things. Also, also on the other side, I mean, always also on the Palestinian side. I mean, the the the, the people that, that the show sh sh actually shows the the what uh, the ideologically and personal pain that motivates these people to do these terrorist acts. Mm -hmm. And I believe that also on the on the Palestinian side, the the personal uh, uh, drama cannot be uh, shown as it is in real life. Absolutely. And, and, but, I think, but I think Fauda is doing a good job, is, is, is very, very close. Uh, and, and I can see it by the, uh, the emotional response of the viewers. Absolutely. I mean, that is one of the, as I was saying before, I mean, the, that showing both of those sides, not just these men um, and women going on these missions across across crossing these borders, but also the effects that, that that has on them when they go home to their families, you know, such as when Doran goes home to his family and he can't really connect to them in the same way that he would love to be able to, you know, you can see that struggle. And, um, and then on the, on the Palestinian side as well, you have, you know, the wives and the children of these men who are, you know, um, sacrificing themselves for whatever their mission is. It's just, I, I do think that's incredibly relatable because we all, human, you know, we're all humans and we all have people we love. Um, and, and, you know, there's a really beautiful scene in season one um, where your character is speaking to the character of Nareet, I think I pronounced that right, um, after she's witnessed your unit um, brutalize and terrorize a sheep for information. And it was sort of her first, you know, indoctrination into being on the ground. Um, and she just kind of can't handle it. You can see in her person and, and how, how emotional she gets that, you know, and because it's the first time, it really affects her psyche. And it, that was like a very interesting moment to watch as a viewer, because then you have your character who's sort of 
done this and has figured out a way to lock all of that pain and trauma into a separate um, compartment in their brain. And I just thought that was such a, a beautifully done scene to kind of show the new perspective and sort of someone who's already been there, done that. Um, and how they, you know, and he tries to give her the best, you try to give her the best information you can. Um, it was just really, really wonderful. And, and I'm sure that having been a part of IDF yourself and in your own way, like maybe that, maybe that speech you give her about a, a fighting dog and just having to go for it without thinking, um, maybe that resonated. I think that that resonates with a lot of people in the military across the world, you know? Um, yeah, I think I think that to be a soldier is a, in in a certain way you have to to give to to let go of your personal um, uh, personal feelings, personal uh, opinions, uh, you in in order to survive and in order to accomplish your mission. Uh, it's uh, you can you can. I, I I don't think it's it's different in from from any other military in the world. I mean that's the, that's the basic of military. That's the basic thing that you do when you get in the military. You go through boot camp and they they break you in order to uh, rebuild you in a way that you would be able to uh, to perform in such an environment. And that you get up when, the minute you are ordered to do something, you do it. You do not, uh, you do not second question it because because there is no time. There is no you, you don't have enough knowledge to second guess an order that comes from 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 above. Uh, that is that is one main aspect of of being a of, of being a soldier. Now, uh, uh, as you get deep deeper and deeper and deeper inside. Uh, as this unit does, so it is even more it, it, that if you had a split second to guess, uh, for me as a tank commander, let's say I've been in situations that even during a combat, I, I, I could maybe hesitate for a second or two in, in, in uh, um, thinking about some situations, but uh, when you when you go so deep, and the minute if you're exposed, you you die uh, in in, the, in this unit. So there there is no there is no time for for anything except uh, doing what you were told in that exact minute. Doing making making things happen and uh, and and act immediately. Right. Absolutely. And yeah. that 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 is something that they. They've been trained to do that. Every soldier is trained to do, and uh, and um, the, um, I mean, my character in, the, in that in that scene uh, shows, as you said, that the, the, the part that is also already uh, have become uh, a little bit numb. But I I hope that as an actor, I've managed to show that. There is a side in him that is still that that it hurts him. That it's 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 something that he doesn't take. Uh, he he has when he goes home, he second guess. He second yeah. guesses. What, what, yeah. Uh, Rest assured, you did you did play that very very. I mean, it was it, as I said, it was like just a scene that really. Um, it brought tears to my eyes for both of the, both of those characters. Because you could see the struggle in in both of their differing ways, and also thank you so much for your service. Like I, I'm I'm always um, I'm just in in awe of people who put their lives on the line to protect all of us back at home. So um, I wanted to jump over to uh, Leticia for a second and talk to her a little bit about Dr. Sheeran, who is a wonderful female character in general, but also on this particular show. Um, is she unmuted now? Let me make sure. That no, that yeah. <laughs> okay, good. <That's> Hi. <laughs> um, Hi. Thank you so much for being on with us too. I, I uh, thank you. I adore, I adore your character. Um, my goodness, she has a lot of things going on, like all, all the twists. Thank you so much. Character, um, especially in the, in, when we're first introduced to her character, I, I I found it so fascinating that this very intelligent highly educated woman who, you know, went to school in Paris, 
um, you know, would, would come back to uh, this world that is sort of oppressive towards women. Obviously, she's there to do good in the community and she works in the hospital. Um, and I noticed right away that even though she was coming back to this, to this kind of world, she never really wore um, the same kind of clothing as the other women. She never wore, his, not really, his job. And, you know, she's a female in a very male dominated workspace, I'm assuming. Um, mm -hmm. Even in America, the hospitals are very male dominated. So I'm, I'm assuming it's the same um, over in Palestine. So uh, my first question for you is, did you find that, or did you, like, I'm, I'm sure you researched for this role to an extent. Um, are there a lot of women who, who have that mentality um, over in them in Palestine who, who decide not to? Um, sort of so I think them? the interesting, the interesting thing to know is that this character wasn't written that way at the very beginning. And oh. we um, um, created Shirin um, there is two things. First, uh, Leora Kamenitsky. I, I hope I say her name well. Boaz, tell me, correct me. <laughs> but uh, mm -hmm. she was the only, yeah, she was the only female writer at the, um, the very beginning for the first season. And she, actually at the very beginning, Shirin was just selling uh, fruits and vegetables with uh, her uncle, at the corner of the streets and she said no way this character will be a smart educated woman and she has minimum four years of um, university or whatever and this is how she landed being leading the, the, the hospital or or she has a very high position we don't really know I don't really know <laughs> maybe the writers know um, and I also came with my ideas and they were Lior and Avi and the writers were open enough to listen and welcome my ideas about the fact that she needed to have another culture to have uh, at the beginning she was just Palestinian and I said but listen if she has uh, one uh, feet foot whatever, outside of the conflict she will be able to have empathy for both sides and she will also be closer to me because i'm outside of the conflict i'm french and even if my mom is lebanese it's another story like i'm i i was you know born and raised in france and i'm not part of all this complicated situation so this allows me as well to have um empathy for both sides and to understand uh, how um, boaz said before that they're suffering in both different ways but this they're both suffering mm -hmm. so it was really interesting when we decided that she would she will be french a half french and actually there is a very very funny thing that uh, we were in the desert uh, filming season two and then there is a guy with a camel you know like and he's like, hey, I recognize you. Who are you? Blah, blah, blah. And uh, I tell him and he says, he goes to the Wikipedia page and he's like, oh, so you have a French father in the series and you, are, you have been studied that and this and that. And I didn't even know myself <laughs> because they didn't tell me. And it was so funny because the way everything was created in the show was so quick and so uh, sometimes last minute that they added, if you remember this, they added in the, Nurit is saying this about me. Uh -huh. Not in, not, not on screen, like it's out, it's off screen. And she's saying when I'm on screen with pictures that I studied in Paris and my father is French and right, right, it was right. so funny. So we didn't even discuss that. So it was just a nice uh, anecdote. Do you say anecdote in English? That's Absolutely. Um, that. <laughs> That's very cool. Another word we might use is kismet. It sounds like you completely understood. Or you had such a strong idea for who this character should be, and it really resonated with the creatives on that show. And so that's that's like a wonderful. Um, you know, yeah, I was character. lucky because they were yeah they were open minded. Really, really, they they were listening to the to the actors, not only me. So uh, it was really a pleasure. That's incredible, and I'm so glad because that is one of the most interesting aspects of, of that of your particular character is that she does seem like this 
almost this third party perspective, you know, because as you said, she's got a foot in both worlds. And it does make her compassionate to both sides of the of the issue. And you you do you do feel like, you know, uh, like she completely understands both sides of the conflict in a very different way because she's she's been exposed to the world outside of, you know, Palestine. And also it's amazing to see, and I'm sure it's also probably very empowering for women in Palestine to see a woman in uh, you know, as a doctor versus a woman yeah. on the selling fruit. Like that, there's a there's a power to that. And also you said, you, you were asking, do these kinds of women exist in, in the Arab world? And I really want to say, yes, they really exist because I met them for real. And also for another movie, um, Holy Air, we were talking about it before. Um, Ingrid was saying that. And I was uh, teaching sexual education for women. And I just met this, the real one, you know, and, and they're, they're, you never see these women on screen, so it's it's important. Also, I see that um, our viewers are um, asking questions, and someone said, "What about our questions?" So I think we have being a Q and A at the end. We just are. wanted We're, to tell I, them. I, I, yes, thank you. Yeah, I, I you got but seriously. People are so excited to talk to you. There's like so many questions. <laughs> there are a lot of questions. Yeah. Oh, We're wow. very happy as well. Yeah, good. <laughs> Happy. I'm gonna ask you. I'm gonna ask you both a few more questions because we got a five minute like later start. So I'm gonna take that time because I would like to ask questions, and then we're definitely gonna hand it over to the chat. So sure, if you got questions, put it in the chat. But um, yeah, I mean, I have so many. I have to like skip because you know we're running out of time. But um, I just, I just think the show is so, so wonderful, and and uh, I wanted to say. So, so you were born and raised in Paris, right? Um, in, yeah, in south of France. Uh, south, did you yeah. so did you learn Arabic and Hebrew for the show, or did you know already know one of those languages? No, uh, I don't speak Arabic actually. My mother uh, didn't uh, teach us for um, reasons of um, racism, because you know we were facing some sure. things as kids, and and we just asked her not to teach us actually. And I think it was a bit, uh, she was suffering about this, but uh, then now I regret, like I, I wish I was, I could speak, but uh, so I learned by phonetic. I just know how to say, you know, I'm tired, I'm hungry. How are you? I love you. I miss you. Right. right. And, uh, but I have this ability to, um, when I work to um, just make my accent disappear in a lot of languages. So in Spanish as well, I saw this question before. And in Italian, in, in I did it in Greek, in Hebrew, in Arabic, in in Berberian, which is a very, very hard language. And um, it's like a game. And um, actually, you uh, Americans are very good at this. Very good. I mean, the actors are often playing many languages. And he's not American, but Viggo Mortensen. He's, you, I mean, you know this guy, right? Yeah. <laughs> I say this, I think his name right and i saw him in in different movies speaking six languages perfectly so i think it's just work uh, some people dance some people sing and some people just speak you know languages yeah learning languages is still sad. but i, I don't speak I them speak. I, I just know my lines <laughs> right yeah well, you, <laughs> that's it sounds very um you you, you fooled me and i you know um so <laughs> So now I'm going to just throw just a few questions at both of you. So go either one, you know, whoever wants to answer them. Um, I'd love both of your perspectives. Uh, so I know that at least I, I was doing some research on it. And so Fauda is shot with both an Arab and Israeli crew, right? Which is kind of amazing and very, what I would say, meta, given the, given the, uh, the, the context of the show. Um, and I read that during one of your shoots, maybe you were shooting in the Gaza Strip at one point. Is that true? For in season one or two? In, no, in Gaza? Yeah. No, no. Is that no. true or that not true? That's a fake article. That and the, okay. crew is, the crew is not, I mean, the crew is Israeli fully, but it's uh, oh. with Arab Israelis and Jews Israelis. Okay. Well, I just wanted to, to speak to how, um, you know, this show is, is, portraying both Israelis and Arab and, the, and those cultures. And I was going to ask you guys, essentially, like, that's like a beautiful, like, being able to have both of those cultures represented, do you guys find that it, that it 
helping the relationship is like this little show helping the relationship between you know not maybe not politically but on the ground um, personally between uh you know people in israel and in palestine i mean at all uh, it's a, it's i want to say yes uh, <laughs> i mean uh, no because i it's it's hard for me to know actually what's going what what's happening. I can't say, I can't tell you the truth. I can tell you what I think, what I feel, uh, and 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 I really want to believe that it that it does. But but I, and I I'm confident that Faura has a very very big uh, part in in the dialogue between between uh, uh, not a political dialogue in the political level. I mean the the um, um, among the people. Uh, Fauda is uh, representing both sides, and both sides are uh, are well aware of this series. I mean, we are number one. Uh, I've just they, they told me that we are number one, uh, uh, the number one Netflix show in Lebanon. So, uh, so I'm I'm sure that the the because the show is so is showing the human aspects of both sides, and both sides are watching the show. I'm sure that uh, it gives um, uh, an, an opening for a new dialogue between uh, Arabs and Israeli, uh, Arabs and Jews. Uh, I, I, I don't think that it's going to solve the problem uh, because the problem is very deep and the yeah. conflict is very deep. But I'm sure, but even more uh, important than this, I think that the the the, um, the role of Fauda in in this conflict uh, worldwide, I think, is that that's the unique part because I'm getting uh, a, a lot of uh, the, these days a lot of uh, responses from people all around the world that I think that they will, will they heard about the conflict, but they really not not uh, got enough information about the conflict, that not aware of the depth of the conflict. And uh, so I, I, I get responses from people from India, from South uh, Africa, from Canada, from, uh, from Denmark, from uh, Australia, from New Zealand, all around the world. I haven't got any responses from China yet, but uh, I think that, that the, the fact that Fauda is watched all around the world and people are seeing the, the, the show and they are actually seeing the conflict. And that, that is a great uh, thing that Fauda does, I think. Absolutely, absolutely. I, I completely agree. I think if nothing else, it has definitely shined a, a light on, um, you know, a conflict that not a lot of people, to be honest, were, are very educated on. Um, so it's, it's that in that part, it's absolutely great. And and then for you, uh, Leticia, do you think in, in France, I'm sorry to hear that when you were younger, you felt a lot of racism. I mean, of course, that's un unfortunately everywhere in this world. Do you, do you feel like, it, firstly, is Fauda in, um, popular in France? And also, if it is, do you feel like it might be helping <laughs> um, at least or have a role in, in educating people in, in like non-Muslim worlds too about about people of different cultures? Um, so in France, it's popular, but all the time, France is late on everything. So, <laughs> so they, they, it took a long time for the first season to, to be on Netflix because they sold it before to a smaller channel. This is what's, ha what's happening right now with season two, uh, three. Um, it's sold to a smaller channel and it's going to be on Netflix on the 4th of, Ju of June. So yeah, it's a big hit. Uh, I'm also like Boaz getting tons of messages from all over the world. And it's very surprising, very, even actually, yeah, even from Lebanon. And uh, even from, you know, it's, it's funny to, uh, to see that Indian people, Brazilian people or Middle Eastern people can, can enjoy the show the same way. And I think it's really because it's, based on the characters and what happens between them. Because for the second part of your question, I'm not sure it's, I couldn't say it's educating people about the conflict because there are so many things missing about the conflict. But Lior Raz was very clear about this. He said, 
we're not doing a documentary here. It's a TV show and it's going to be um, showing the emotional conflicts, you know, between people. And this is also why it works and why people relate to the characters. And, but still, some people who never heard about the conflict can know a bit and get interested and then go and dig and, and, and be interested more. Um, and if it helps uh, in resolving the conflicts, I don't know, but I was surprised really to see that um, we are receiving uh, messages from, from Palestine as well. And that was very surprising. But what is also sure is that for some people, some people are really um, close-minded about, about uh, the conflicts and, and, and then Fauda. And they, so for those people, you, you won't ever open their mind about it because they just don't want to. But, but I think it's a good, yeah, as you said, it's a good way to, to get interested in it and to, and to see that human beings and families are really both suffering from both sides. Yeah, compassion is a very powerful tool toward Compassion, yeah, exactly. Oh, um, okay, well, thank you guys so much. I had a blast asking you and, and learning more. Thank but you. I'm now going to hand it over to Ingrid and all of our wonderful um, guests because they do have a lot of great questions. So um, thank you both. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, there's... Hope to meet you one day. <laughs> yeah, me too. We have a lot of questions here. Um, so there's a question from Fadi Flowers, uh, who is asking, how has the series, and I think we've responded somehow, somewhat to, uh, to a certain degree to that question, but I'm still going to read it. It says, uh, how has the series been received differently by Palestinians and Israelis? I don't know who wants to take that question, maybe Boaz or... Um, <laughs> ironically... It depends which ones. <laughs> I, I don't know. Ironically, everyone loves it. I mean, I'm getting great responses from 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 uh, from the Arab side and great responses from the from the Jewish side. So I, uh, I, I mean, you know, you know how they say that uh, a good compromise is a is a compromise where both sides are unhappy. That means <laughs> that's a good compromise. So, it's true. Yeah. So, <laughs> So, uh, and on the other hand here, uh, both sides are happy with the show. So I think that, that somehow in some mysterious, magical way, the creators managed to do uh, a show that represents both sides um, quite accurately. Nice. Uh, Ravens is asking, was it hard trying to negotiate with Hamas? I'm not sure what he's referring to. <laughs> what, what, I don't, how to negotiate we didn't. with Hamas? We didn't. It's fine. <laughs> as a, he's asking me as the as Israel Prime Minister. I, am, uh, or, or, I don't know. We didn't negotiate with Hamas. Yeah, that's I mean, what I'm saying. The, the, the Fauda, the Fauda, the Fauda uh, production didn't have. We didn't have to negotiate with Hamas. Ah, Doron said it in an interview, but I think maybe let's ask Doron. <laughs> we don't know. All right. It's I funny you call him Doron instead of Lior. Yeah. I, l I love to say Doron with the... <laughs> with the... the ra. Brenda is very excited and she says, Hi, we need to know if there will be a season four. If so, when? Thank you. Yes, there will be. They're writing it. Right, Boaz? <laughs> yep. I'm sure you have more information than I do. That's true. No, they're writing it. That's, yeah. that's, that's, that's the truth. Mm -hmm. Mike wants to know for Boaz and Leticia, what level of training did you receive in firearms for the show? Uh, I, just, <laughs> I just learned to hide behind, you know, to hide behind a door, to hide. Nothing for me. Nothing for you. Uh, as a, as a, as a, for for me, I'm, uh, I was familiar a little bit with weapons from my military service. But uh, we had uh, during the the show, uh, we we had to train uh, specifically with the weapons that we were using. 
and uh, there were uh, there were two um, guys that were uh, on, on, in every scene that there was a um, involved uh, action or weapon uh, who were dealing with weapons. They were um, they were with us and correcting us all the time and working. Uh, we had to find the problems that it was that you had to find some balance between the real way that you use weapons and you uh, uh, operate in uh, in these situations and uh, between the TV um, uh, aspect from the director's view to how he wants to shoot them. So not, not all the time these two were, uh, could, could work together. So there was, the, there was a need to find a way between, uh, uh, to, to manage to accomplish both. Mm -hmm. But we, had, we, we, we trained with the weapons and we had a trainer that was uh, working with us all the time on set. Andrea is asking, how else can fans connect with Israel and learn more about life in Israel? So. You can come to, to Israel. The minute the, the coronavirus is, uh, uh, will allow us to, to hop on plane, so you're more than welcome to come to Israel. We have, we have an unbelievable country. We have everything here from, uh, from north to south. You can, uh, you can be in the desert. You can be in, this, in the ocean. You can see green uh, mountains. It's a small country, but uh, it has everything in it, and the people are amazing. And uh, the culture is amazing. The history is amazing. And uh, I think that the best way to, uh, uh, to, to know Israel is to come here uh, as fans and as tourists and as uh, to just come over. We'd love to have you. There's a lot of messages of love in the chat. We love Boaz. We love Leticia. So there's a lot of that, those that just wanted to share because you have a, a great fan base. They love you guys. Um, Thank you. Bob is asking, do either cast members have personal conflicts with the characters they play in terms of the occupation? I cannot answer for other people and actually I have to say that I don't want to answer the question regarding myself because I really try to, uh, th that, that's a very good question, but I'm trying to, um, for me as an actor, I do not judge, I'm trying not to judge the character that I, that I play uh, and uh, regarding my personal uh, political views and uh, and again I, I don't think that the political aspect is 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 an issue that I want to to address because uh, it's a non-issue for me as an actor it doesn't I, I really for me the way that I that I perform I do not uh, think that I should uh, my personal views of the of, of, I, I'm let's say in a different way my uh, interest is what is the political views of Avichai, my, the character that I that I pursue. Mm -hmm. um, again, glad to see Avichai and Dr. Shirin alive again. <laughs> Boaz, <laughs> <Hello. laughs> Boaz love to see you alive. Um, let me see what we have here. What other films and books can fans consume to learn about Israel, Palestinian life, and issues? Excuse me again? So, Andrea is asking, like, very similarly to the question about um, how to know more about Israel, but now if you have any film recommendations or books, book recommendation about, the, about issues between Israel and Palestine, or the life between Israel and, and Palestinians, uh, if you have any recommendations, and I think that th there are a lot of these uh, on Netflix right now. That are there, are a lot, there are a lot of uh, Israeli movies, uh, I think more than series, that, that, that are uh, uh, showing the conflict. But the problem is, I don't know how the names are in English. Mm -hmm. uh, so so it's, a, uh, it's a problem, but there are a lot of them. There is one. Uh, Ah, it's not regarding the conflict. Uh, 
but there are a lot of... Uh, Everything uh, is regarding the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm but kidding. There are a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, Israeli movies that, that made... Of, yes, uh, Baz with Bashir. Right. Mm. Baz with Bashir is one of the, the most famous when ones. Fly, that, yeah. uh, the, mm. the animation movie about the, the war in Lebanon. Uh, so, but there are many more unbelievable uh, movies uh, but, uh, but you can, I, I really if you want to find um, When Heroes Fly, you know Boaz with the, um, what's... Um, when Heroes Fly uh, uh, with uh, Thomas Capone that played uh, Thomas. In, the yes. first, in the first series. And, and if you want to see, if you want to see two great movies uh, where I play, well, uh, in which I play, you can see um, uh, a borrowed identity. This is the English name. It's uh, Dancing Arabs, the Israeli name. Well, not really, but it's another name. And uh, th that's the same movie, or uh, in French, it's Mon Fils. And you can really see also Holy Air. That's just one title for the entire world, Holy Air. I really love this movie by Shadi Sroor. And uh, the one I'm playing, the sexual education uh, <laughs> teacher. <laughs> but that's not the point in the movie. But it's a great movie. And one, I don't know if you know this, but Homeland is based on, a, on, a, on an Israeli series that is called the, the again, in, uh, Hatufim. In, no, in, in Hebrew it's Hatufim. I, I forgot the name in English. Um, and and that, that's the, the same creator that, that made Hatufim in Israel that was uh, went uh, abroad into the uh, to the United States and made homeland. Uh, Prisoners of war. Uh, Prisoners of war, exactly. Prisoners Thank you for war. the so people are answering. You know, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> so you can watch the, series, the two seasons, an amazing series, and uh, and that was one of the that I think that was the one of the first series that that uh, broke the borders. Of Israel to to uh, shown uh, worldwide. So this is more a comment from Giorgio. He said, "Leticia is even more beautiful here than on TV." So he's joining. Thank from you. We have people from around the world here. Oh, hey! Uh -huh. uh, what about me? <laughs> we, the, 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 <laughs> we love Boaz. <laughs> um, no, Leticia is unbelievably beautiful wow, on TV thank and you. in real life. <laughs> For both Leticia and Boaz, if you had not died on the show, would you have wanted to continue in Fauda? What do you want? We're next? dead. We, we, no spoilers. We're dead. <laughs> um, uh, I'm personally happy to have lived this experience and now to, uh, to be happy to, to, to fly to other horizons. And I don't like to be stuck in a TV series for years. So um, I'm happy and, and actually we are, uh, I, sorry, um, I've been offered some other parts uh, waiting, you know, to sign, but in the US, in France and so in France. So I hope, um, I hope that the new amazing characters will, will come. Yeah. I didn't know that Leticia died. <laughs> I didn't know that Boaz died. I swear. Maybe I don't even know when you are you dying. I don't know. Maybe I didn't die. Maybe I don't know. I don't know. Someone said. No, it. for real. I'm really serious. I don't know because I don't watch everything because it's too violent for me. I don't know the truth. <laughs> Mike is asking, there's been a lot of criticism, so going back to the uh, writing process of the show, there's been a lot of crit criticism of the show from the Palestinian community. How much liaison has there been with them? Do you have Palestinian writers on the show? The script doctor was Palestinian, I mean, was Arab-Israeli uh, on first season. Uh, and second season, not anymore and third season i have no idea <laughs> maybe boaz knows 
I don't think that a Palestinian right. I, I don't understand the question. If no, was a Palestinian not Palestinian. Writer, yeah, if you, if if um, there was any Palestinian writers on the show. You when you no when Palestinian you I, uh, I think you refer to you're not referring to uh, uh, Arab Israel. No. Yeah, I mean, people are confused with that, Boaz. Yeah, you know, they don't really understand that there is no way that. There's two. Yeah. yeah. Very different. It's Arab Palestinian, Israelis. Palestinian, yeah. Palestinians are not, are not citizens of Israel. They, they live, um, uh, they don't have, um, um, uh, how do you say it? Uh, they're not Israeli citizens. And there are Arab Israel that live inside Israel that are citizens as me and every other Israeli in, in, in Israel. And to make they, it clear they, sometimes they you part, can... They, they were part of the, of, the, of the crew, they were part of the cast, but there were no Palestinians could work with us uh, in, uh, in Israel. But I think the question, you can, we can make it maybe more clear um, when, you, when we speak about Arab Israelis saying that they are from uh, Palestinian culture. So that's a way to understand it a bit more. Uh, and no, there, I mean, if, if this was the sense, the meaning of the question, uh, then yes, on first season, as I said, we had uh, a script doctor that was uh, Arab Israeli and she was amazing by the way and she changed a lot of things like the other actors. Every actor, I think, was talking with Lior and talking with the crew, and as I said before. But, but no, uh, no Arab Israeli slash Palestinian writer on the crew, uh, on the, the screen script writers. Sorry, my English. No, you're great. You're doing great. Uh, Riza Benson asked, what was the thinking behind bringing English dubbing with subtitles versus all subtitles? Was it to help America distinguish between the Israelis and the Arabs? What was the... What was the thinking? I, and, that, and I think, again, that's probably be for the creators of the show, but maybe you can respond to that, is um, what was the thinking behind bringing English dubbing with subtitles versus all subtitles? It's an option on Netflix. You can just... It's not, you can you can watch it, you know, an original Arabic version, Arabic. Hebrew and Arabic. <laughs> it's I, I it's have, it's way better. I have to say that the the dubbing is in Israel. We do in Israel we do not dub. The only thing that is dubbed, you say dubbed. Yeah, dubbed. <laughs> yeah. The only thing that is dubbed in uh, in Israel are uh, are shows from uh, for children. Uh, as as Israeli people, we have all only Israeli subtitles. And we see all the all the programs in the in the original um, language. If they're Spanish, if they're French, if they're German, if they're um, American, British. Uh, so when uh, for me to see an Israeli show dubbed uh, is weird uh, twice. First, to, yeah. first of all, because it's dubbed, and second of all, because it's dubbed. It's, it's Israeli. Uh, I'm supposed to hear uh, Hebrew, but uh, I think uh, I I would really recommend everyone, even the ones that are used to seeing uh, shows dubbed, to see it in the in the original uh, language because uh, then they will hear maybe start to 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 hear the the different sounds between uh, between Hebrew and Arabic. And, uh, and I've seen a scene uh, dubbed and it's really uh, um, without, I, I don't mean to insult any dubber. <laughs> and I, I have dubbed some things in my life uh, for children. So, but I think uh, it's, uh, it's better to see it in the original yeah. language uh, with subtitles. And that's what we show at the festival. It's all original content with, with, their, with English subtitles. Um, question about uh, your most memorable experience when shooting Fauda. Wow. Yeah, if you have one. That's a tough one. I mean, it's three seasons and 
I, I, I have to say the, the, the most memorable, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll give you two. The first one is the, the one that when I, when I got the part and I went to the offices of the production for the first time. So I got, I got to the building and I entered the elevator and, uh, and entered with me Leo Raz that at the time was an Israeli actor that I, I, I saw sometimes on set or I saw on TV, but, and we were like, hey, hey, how's it doing? Hey, great to be on the show. And, uh, and then he was uh, Leo Raz, but today he's Leo Raz. And if you go with Leo Raz in the elevator, so it's something, uh, uh, so that, that's, a, that's a memory that I remember. But the second one uh, is, is that, uh, there was a scene in the second season that after the team came back from um, uh, from some operation, uh, so my character sits uh, in in the in the courtyard of the of the unit and uh, and just drinks tea and, and there's a fire. He sits next to a fire, a campfire, and uh, drinks tea alone. And he has to. It's like them. Uh, and then his uh, Ellie, my my commander, comes and sits with me, and we have this dialogue. And what I love about this scene that that, that it's a moment that is in the twilight zone between uh, the the military life and his civilian life. It's like he's he's uh, he doesn't go home immediately. Immediately, he likes to, he has to take a little bit of time to. Uh, to make the transformation between his his military life that he just came and the blood and he just killed one someone mm -hmm. and and to take his time before he comes he goes home to his wife and children and it's a scene almost about nothing I mean they talk just about a little bit about their feelings but they're not really saying anything and I love this scene because they are both uh, a little bit exposed in that scene emotionally. And I love the, the, the Twilight Zone because if we talked before about the scene with the dogs and Nurit, that Avicha is totally uh, uh, operational, in operational mode. So this is a scene where he shifts uh, from his operational mode to his uh, family mode. Uh, and, I, and I love this moment. Leticia? Uh, so many moments just came to my mind right now. Um, I will um, I will tell one in detail, but um, of course it was memorable because and sad because we were shooting season one during the con a real conflict uh, in 2014, which was really hard uh, to know that we were shooting while people were dying and other people fighting to protect, you know, so it was hard. But a very funny and not really funny moment with, um, sorry, maybe it's a spoil, is it a spoil for some? Yeah, anyway, we're dead. Um, <laughs> but um, as I told you before, um, no, I didn't say it. They, they're not giving me any information uh, and I don't have, the script translated because there is no, you know, not enough money to translate, of course, just for me, the entire 12 episodes. So I don't even know what's happening with other characters on the show. I just have my dialogue in English and Arabic and I don't read Arabic. So I just have to, well, it's a complicated story. But then there is one scene I play with, um, what's his name? Um, the, the chief of the Palestinian uh, Authority uh, and the Israeli, oh my God. Itzhak? Itzik, oh my God, I'm so bad with them. Itzik Cohen, sorry. <laughs> uh, sorry, and, uh, and, and, and so I'm playing the, the last scene for me. It's the last scene of season two and, and the director says cut. And then they speak, you know, mixed Hebrew and English, and I'm trying to catch things. And I understand that they're speaking about someone who's dead. <laughs> and I'm like, are you? Like, I was in this scene, I was saying, please protect Walid. Like, you promised me, you protect him, blah, blah, blah. And they, they, they say cut, and I'm, and I'm hearing that he's actually 
dead as well. And I'm like, you never told me ever. Like I'm playing the whole season. I never know, you know, and I'm not even able to know what is the end of this character. I'm playing with him all the time. And it was very funny to understand after my last words that actually the guy I'm talking about is dead. Wow. <laughs> so I don't know if it was clear, but it's no, that was clear. It's funny too. That was pretty clear. Uh, Guy Abraham asked you, um, Leticia, did you get any offers for other roles in Israeli TV? Um, yeah, but, uh, but it wasn't for me. <laughs> I didn't say yes. All right. Okay, we only have a few minutes left, so I'm going to go over because it's already past um, 1 p.m. here in New York and I know uh, everybody's busy uh, but I want to go with there's so many matches, messages in the chat we have over a hundred messages so I want to go over um, some questions and maybe Leticia or Boaz if you see a question that you, you really want to respond to please feel free um, no we never filmed in Gaza Lid. okay thank you for responding I just see that <laughs> Also, I saw someone uh, while you were searching yeah. for a question um, um, that asked what we are doing next. So, Boaz, maybe if you want to say you're yeah. doing something. Yeah. I'm trying to say what I'm doing next. I'm with my children. Yeah. <laughs> no, not today, as an actor, this I is, mean. This is Corona time. I'm home yeah. with the kids. I'm home Thank with my you four-year-old boy and two-year-old daughter that's and what i'm doing cool that's actually cool. i'm going to to um copy and paste all your information in in the chat so that people can follow you on social media and yeah um, and as for me after i'm going to do theater I uh, have two projects. I just worked with uh, Terence Malik on a very, very great project. I was so happy. Oh, wonderful. And um, yeah, and I have a movie in France and two theater plays. So it's, it's, uh, it's great. I was doing theater years ago, so I'm coming back to my first love. <laughs> great. Do you, do you want to add anything? Um, uh, someone asked here. Project? Yeah, there is a question here. Someone oh. wrote a question. Boaz, we love you. <laughs> Boaz, we love you. Of I course. No, I, I did It's not true. I did No one wrote it. No, th there was that. No, yeah, I saw it. I saw it. <laughs> but let me go over that question. Um, actually, that is very important. Is do you find it hard as an as an actor to let go of the circumstances and go back to your normal lives after a day of shooting? Or is the story and the character stays with you? That's a very good, um, for, for all the actors yeah. that, are, that, that are participating in this talk today. I think that would be- Actually, that, I want to hear Leticia's answer. Okay. okay. I'll, I'll explain why later. Okay. I also saw someone who's asking a similar question, like how do you walk away from your character when you're done? It's, the thing is, um, or, or also uh, before when, the question was asked, how did you research for your character? But that, that is not something I do. I'm not doing any research about any character and I'm not going into my character's past because I did it before so hard. Like I was digging into the character, character's past and everything. It doesn't help me. It makes me weaker because I'm going in my head and in my memory while I'm acting. I, I don't need this because what makes me real and sincere and true and powerful is not me, it's the other one. Is is I'm just watching in the other one's eyes and I'm just receiving what he gives me and I just trust the text and I just say my lines and that's it. And this is why I think the, 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 the Walid and Shirin scenes are, or Doron and Shirin scenes are, are, are intense it's because they are giving me a lot and i'm just receiving and and vibrating with my being i don't know i'm just here and this is the way since this is the way i act and since the, the year i i started to to play like this 
I'm a happy actress. Uh, before I was a sad actress because I was all the time making, you know, Balagan Fauda in my head because I was trying to be the character. No, I think the hardest part for an actor is to be himself or herself in front of the camera. And that's the hardest part. But I, that's the part I enjoy the most. So it's cool. Are you more using the Meisner technique in that way? So Yeah, totally. Okay. You recognize it, right? Meisner. Yeah, Meisner just saved my life, actually. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Boaz, your turn. Uh, regarding the, the question, I, I mean, I, I wanted to hear Leticia because the, the, the first part of my act, uh, question that, it, that it, every actor has a different method of acting and every actor approaches the character different and, and, um, and leaves the character differently. And uh, so I, I was wondering, I was actually curious to hear what Leticia's experience from uh, uh, regarding that question. Uh, but I am not the type of, of actor that uh, is so emotional, involved, uh, that it's hard for me to let go the minute there is a cut and we finish the day of shooting and go home. I usually, I didn't find myself in situations that uh, it was hard for me, for me to, to, uh, to make that emotional, uh, emotional cut but uh, i did find it i do find it hard but i believe that is in every profession after a day's work to to i, I take home the emotions from the work not from the character i mean if I, if if it was hard for me if it was frustrating for me if i did my job well if i'm happy if i'm sad so there, there it, I have to say that it is very, very intense for me. I can go home very uh, satisfied, or I can go home very, very low, uh, and very, very uh, uh, self with self criticism about my performance. And and this emotional part is very, uh, uh, I, I I I do take home, but the usually the character I need. I leave on set. Wow, great, great. I unfortunately that we have uh, time is already uh, gone, and this was a really, really lovely conversation. Thank you so much for your time. There's so many, many messages of love, of thank yous uh, to you both. Thank you all so much. This was amazing, amazing. Stay safe. Um, yeah, there's a lot of thank yous, and uh, yeah, I can't thank you enough for sharing. Uh, your time with us, with our audience. Uh, I know it's Friday night, and I know you're with your family, so I really appreciate, um, again, for you to come on today to speak about uh, Fauda. And uh, thank you to Emma for, for leading the conversation. She does this every week, and she's really supporting us uh, that way. It's, it's really wonderful to have her. I'm going to add again in the chat, so please follow uh, Boaz and Leticia and Emma uh, and the Chelsea Film Festival on social media. Continue the conversation with them. They're very open. Um, they're really uh, thank amazing people. So, yeah, they're I just wanted to, to say thank you because I'm seeing people uh, saying uh, hello from India, hello from Lebanon, hello for, from everywhere, and really thank you for, for watching us. And also about the, someone asked like many times the questions, so I just remember now. Um, yes, maybe I'll go to Bollywood because <laughs> I'm receiving like so many messages that I look like this famous actress in India in the past years. So really, I'm receiving that a lot every day. So who knows, maybe I'll be, uh, you know, be great. reviving her. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you very, very much, Ingrid and Emma, for hosting us and Chelsea Film Festival. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, Leticia and I, we, we met last year in Cannes. And since then, uh, I, I've become really... We kept in touch. Yeah, yeah. in touch. And I love your work. So I'm, I'm so appreciative of... Uh, thank you. Today. I'm proud that French, the French women like you just <laughs> made this amazing film festival. I can't wait to come. Thank you, yes. Hopefully when we can travel again and Boaz, I'd love to invite you to the festival as well. If you still there. I'd love to, I'd love to, uh, to come. 
Thank you. Thank you very much, Ingrid and Emma. Thank you. Thank you, Leticia. And it was good to you. see you, Buzz. <laughs> you too. And thank you, everyone, for, for watching. It's great to see your uh, faces in the small square, wherever <laughs> you are around the world. Uh, thank you for watching Fauda and thank you for watching this uh, interview. I had a great time. Yeah, please continue to watch Fauda. Uh, it's on Netflix right now. And join us next Friday at noon, 12 p.m. Eastern Time, New York Time, to speak about Grey's Anatomy. We're going to have the star of the show uh, from Grey's Anatomy next week. So please stay safe, you all. Stay healthy. Have a beautiful weekend. And the replay will be available on our YouTube channel uh, a few hours uh, from now. Thank you all. Thank, Thank you, Thank you very much. I can Thank see you. Guys. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Emma. Bye. Thank you, Ingrid. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. 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 Bye. Thanks.